This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say, our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Did you know, Jared, that he has some special cookouts coming up here? He was he was in Cary, Ohio last Friday, and I believe there's another one this Friday. So come check out the Mad Canadian from, I believe, noon to four, from what I saw. Yeah. I might be mistaken, but I'm sure it's noon to four this Friday in Cary, Ohio, right outside of Finley. Uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to, to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 <laughs> while you're, if you're trying to order some. That doesn't, that doesn't work at the side of the truck, unfortunately. Nope. If you do want the 10% off, you do have to go to the website madcanadianbbq.com sloopcast10 for 10% off. But if you were there, say hi to the Mad Canadian. Tell them the, the folks at Sloopcast sent you. And if you want to pick up some seasonings there, well, go right at it. Does he sell seasonings out of the truck? I think so. You know what? We'll ask him. And that's a good idea if he isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, We'll, we'll, we'll have to ask him about that one. We're not sure. But it's right, a good idea. Out, yes. Check out all the great seasonings Mad Canadian has at his website. And again, Sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10% off. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, they have your butt covered. Hey, YouTube. What beer are you drinking <laughs> this week? Uh, I think most, most of our listeners listen in the morning. I don't think they're drinking yet. Um, unless you were talking to me, in which case I have a land grant stiff arm. Nice. I got some Oktoberfest, so fall is almost here. Yeah. This is going to be another dog heavy episode because Apollo is all over me. Let's rejoin the listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. It's actually starting to feel more like fall right now. I'm, I think this is fake fall right now, but you know fake what? Fake fall. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, you know, I was actually able to, and you know, Ohio State won't be actually on the TV for a while yet, but I was actually able to enjoy some college football this week not that this week's this past week's slate of games nothing special happened no no big upsets no new information really um but it was it was nice to actually be able to enjoy it because i just couldn't enjoy it previously it just wasn't anything worth enjoying it just it like why isn't ohio state you know what i mean like it just it got into your head about like Oh man, why isn't Ohio State playing? Why isn't the Big Ten playing? And it just made it impossible to actually enjoy football. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to actually be able to enjoy it. I guess yeah. is what I'm trying to take the long way of saying. Which, yeah. you know, typical Jared. Yes. All right, Jared, let's get into it. Um, well, we... Coming off of a short... Uh, layoff. Short layoff. Layoff? No. We just, we just released an episode recently, only yeah. a few days later, we're going to have... Short releasing... turnaround? There you go. That's the word. Okay. Short turnaround here. Uh, so not a ton of new information, but we, we do have everyone covered here. Uh, so the Big Ten came out within the past couple of days of the Big Ten schedule. After looking at the list here, I would say the high state has a... How, how to put this I think they favorable. had an I think they had a favorable cross um, cross, cross division, division yeah competition here so yeah. Ohio State picks up and I think this I feel like they did this on purpose though Jerry <laughs> week one yeah week one the bros the the scarlet bros is Scar going at it or scarlet Alliance the scarlet Alliance going at it week one nebraska heading to columbus and yeah. from what i saw from what i saw yeah 
that is the that is the Fox um, headline as the Fox uh, night game, which most likely Jared. Is it a night game? Have, has that been confirmed? From what I saw, I'm going to double check. Okay. Um, yeah. It feels not coincidental. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm maybe we're crossing into conspiracy theory stuff now. Um, just you had Ohio State and Nebraska who are really leading this charge back to football. The fan bases have made friends uh, right. in recent weeks. And here's Ohio State, Nebraska week one. Now that's not enough for a conspiracy theory, but Nebraska, who, who are the ones that actually filed the lawsuit yeah. against the Big Ten, uh, their other cross-divisional game is against Penn State, who is, I would say, arguably, maybe inarguably, the second best team in the conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Worst possible, the absolute worst possible cross division setup anyone could have in Nebraska. The team that filed the lawsuit got it. Yeah, that's. I'm not saying it's aliens, <laughs> but it's aliens. But it's aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, the the first game is their headline game, which not night game, the noon game. Yes. So it is the noon game. So Jared, that must mean. Gus Johnson. Gus Johnson special. So they have here Big Ten on Fox, October 24th, noon game, Nebraska, Ohio State, as well as December 12th. And that's just weird seeing that. December 12th is the game. That's yeah. at noon. And if that one, even if it's not official, it's official. We, we can all just make that assumption. December 12th, Ohio State, Michigan, noon, Gus Johnson. It's yeah. happening. All right, so I'm just going to go down the list here, just laying it out here for everybody who, for some reason, isn't aware of Ohio State's schedule. So sure. week one, starting October 24th, home to Nebraska, following up to at State College to take on Penn State. And I don't anticipate there being a whiteout. Well, there may be a white out, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure all of because uh, as of right now and with the Penn State game only being the second game and I don't know, it's still like nearly two months away, uh, do mm -hmm. six weeks or so, whatever the case might be right now. The only people going to be allowed in Big Ten stadiums are like family. I don't know how they're designating that. I don't know if they're yeah. just allotting X number of tickets per player or what like the I, deal is but it's like I, I saw pictures of the clemson game and there was a lot of people there uh, there were a lot of people at the oklahoma state game too and mm -hmm. all of them wearing their face masks if they were wearing face masks all of them wearing the face masks around their chins so oklahoma just like the, gro just like the grocery stores uh. <laughs> i is that what you're seeing some yeah. all right yeah uh following the trip to state college on november 7th home to Rutgers, then going over to college park to take on the terps then home to the hoosiers then back-to-back -back away games of illinois and sparty and then finishing up home against the team up north yeah so uh, starting so strong definitely starting really strong like yeah. really strong and then finishing obviously strong as well. Uh, I mean, that depends Maybe. on how good you think Nebraska is. And I get that they're our friends and everything, but they are who they are. Uh, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's not, I, and well, by the way, I'm, I'm not saying anything that Nebraska fans don't know. I, I think I, in, you know, we've picked up a lot of, at least on Twitter. I have no idea if, how many if any at all are actually listening mm -hmm. to the podcast but i know on twitter we've picked up a lot of nebraska fans and they're all just hey we're looking forward to losing to you by 24 that is is what they keep saying to me on twitter uh something mm -hmm. along those lines anyway and oh, more of that in more of that in a month here <laughs> when, we co when we cover them when we cover the know your enemy section but it is still 
know your enemy for the next month here is still Kevin Warren. <laughs> now and forever. <laughs> yes. Uh, All right. So of the, of the schedule that you see here, Jared, yeah. which one really sticks out to you as a maybe a trap game or maybe a game that Ohio State really needs to look out for? Obviously, second week there, heading over to, to State College. But that's not a, that one. That's not a trap game, though. You know exactly. That one's not. Yeah. Yeah. You you can lose to Penn State. I mean, you know what I mean. Like it's not. Mm-hmm. If you and, show up to that game with a little too much, mm-hmm. you know, a little too much crap in your eyes, you show up to that game with not enough sleep. You show up to that game ill prepared. You'll lose to Penn State. Um, yeah. You can sort of have one foot out of the bed, maybe have a really bad quarter or half against Rutgers and still end up winning the football game. You can't do that against Penn state. There's not as much room for error against Penn state. So Mm -hmm. Penn state's not a trap game. Um, Arguably it's the only (laughs) one of two games on the entire schedule that you couldn't designate a trap game because Michigan's always Michigan. I I don't anticipate this is going to be some sort of great year for Michigan. Um, Not that they've had a, a great year in two decades but uh, this year is not going to be a a year that i feel threatened by michigan in any sort of way buddy i I need you to get down okay okay thank you dog maintenance sorry everyone the door is open if you want to go outside just go i left the door open you can just go outside no one's stopping you okay I, i had i had to have a side convo with the dog so the Penn State game and the Michigan game are the only games on the schedule that you should be really even worried about. So if we're talking trap games, um, Nebraska is the trap game. It's your first time playing football since January. You haven't even had a spring game. You're going to have freshmen in this game it's going to be near a year without football for everyone on the field. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. You have Penn state coming in week two. That's a lot. You know what I mean? If we're, and let's also just, it's, it's a freaking decent, not bad, not great, decent team from the big 10 West, which is a thing. Ohio state has had problems with in the past. Now it's in Columbus. So we're not we're not completely going Purdue Iowa here. Uh, the team is not black and some sort of yellow or gold. So it's not completely Iowa Purdue territory here. It's not at night. So okay, we're we're not we're not full blown. Don't get Iowa here. Mm-hmm. But it's a decent team from the Big Ten West. Yep. Uh, you have a really good game coming the next week. And you're just going to have rust. Now, the good news is is Nebraska has rust, too. So you're on even footing there. Everyone's going to be rusty. No one's going to be hitting on all cylinders. But if rust is, you know, if if we look at, like, field rust, just sort of not being on a football field, but playing an actual game in a long time, you kind of look at that in the same way you look at bad weather which is that it's sort of, it affects everyone, but it, it tends to affect the better team more because it sort of acts as like a, an evener of sorts. So if we're looking for a potential trap game, I think, I think it's week one. Well, you don't normally think of week one as a trap game, but there's a lot going to be a lot of exceptions this year. I don't know, Kyle, where, where do you see a trap game? Maybe the Turks. I mean, you have a you play Penn State, and then you don't think too much about Rutgers for obvious reasons, and then don't really look too far because I mean that middle of the schedule there, it's not good. <laughs> it really isn't for Ohio State, Indiana, Illinois. I don't really expect too much from Michigan State again this year, but potentially that Maryland game there. You're going over to College Park there. Uh, team may be better than it has been. I mean, we'll we'll see how um, Tua's brother does. That's all up in the air. But 
potentially I, that one there. I have no idea what's happened. It's it's weird, and Kyle and I are going to try and remedy this a bit. Um, by the way, we're starting up our Friday episodes again. We will be record. We will be releasing an episode on Friday, so make sure to keep an eye out or an ear potentially out for that. Um, and we're going to start to try to catch up a bit. Um, normally, at this point, and even when I say this point, I mean relative to the start of the season, we've started like conference previews and Big Ten previews, and we start doing all of these previews to amp up to the season. And we've been doing none of that because we've been so caught up in who's canceled, who's uncanceled, are the other conferences canceling, why did we get... We got caught up in so much other stuff that we just, we never did any previews and that's just, that's just is what that is. But, uh, we're going to try and remedy that. And I, I don't know what's happening in the big 10 right now, really outside of Ohio state or just the act of playing or not playing. Yeah. I mean, your brother looked any dang good at Maryland. How much has Maryland actually been on the football field? We know Ohio state's been practicing. Ohio State's mm-hmm. been practicing just in their helmets. Uh, I think they have they are now able to add pads, and I believe they have at this point. Yeah. But where's Maryland at? How's Tua's brother look? Do we have any idea? Do the Does the coaching staff have any idea how the little Tua looks? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and really, how many games are going to play, too? Take, for instance, uh, Baylor. Baylor's had both of their games already this year postponed. Yeah. How, how is that going to be played out now? We keep seeing and hearing things from different medias about, oh, well, Ohio State's only going, to, only going to play eight games while the rest are going to be playing 10 plus games or whatever. It's like nobody knows that. Nobody knows yeah. if Ohio State may be playing six games, five games, and other teams may be playing less games as well too. Yeah we just don't know that it's just all going to have to play on a week by week basis. And so when the committee, the playoff committee is going to have to choose the four best teams, this is just going to be such a difficult decision for them because they're just going to have to base it off of performance off of what they see from a week to week. So it's, so it makes Ohio State right from the get-go. When you get on the field, you better make an impact right away because you never know what that next week is going to be. Especially like you're looking at, um, you play Nebraska. Let's say you play Nebraska, you play Penn State. All of a sudden, we're really deep into fall fall season right now. Maybe Rutgers doesn't come over to to Columbus, and then maybe Ohio State doesn't head over to Maryland. Then you're off for two straight weeks there too. Ohio State has to right from right from the beginning and kind of like what we see with Clemson, but again, look who Clemson's played though, but you know, right. they are looking good from the get-go because you never know. So I think it's really important for Ohio State when they are on the field, they look as crisp as they can. <laughs> and Lord, looking at a lot of these teams these past couple of weeks, yeah, Man, that rust has been building up for a long time for some of these teams. Yeah, uh, Big 12 in particular has looked pretty terrible. Oklahoma State almost lost this past weekend. Oh, There's Desmond, been... how... <laughs> hey, Desmond, how is Oklahoma St- your Oklahoma State pick doing? Uh, um, <laughs> and there's been multiple Big Ten, or excuse me, Big 12 teams already lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, and against like Sun Belt teams who are fine don't get me wrong i'm not here to crap on the sun belt but we are talking like a good sun belt team isn't any better than a good mac team so yeah. yeah and when we've seen we've seen really good mac teams you know because they have these moments like um western michigan had a had a moment there for a while and they would knock off you know illinois or iowa or someone Early in the season. Mm -hmm. This is basically that. This is, you know, and it's, as Kyle was talking about, a lot of the times, because 
because how do I want to say this? What you have are potentially less games to prove yourself. You have less games to prove yourself. So that one loss against let's um, you know Iowa State lost. You lose to Iowa State. That's your one out of conference game, probably, in the Big Twelve. That's it. That's your one out of conference game. So if all and Oklahoma played a real clunker of a team, like not even Sun Belt quality team, and they go out and they slaughter them, and that's and that's fine. But what if there's no quality out of conference win for your entire conference? And then you all just start playing each other. And of course you have that just naturally built into the Big Ten. The Big Ten's only playing the Big Ten this year. It's going to be insanely difficult for the playoff committee to determine who is a good team and who isn't a good team based off of competition because the conferences are being so insular. The playoff committee has it rough this year. And as far as the playoff committee goes... Uh, I want to say this. I think we're all of this mindset right now that the playoff committee is absolutely doing the playoff committee thing on December 20th. I, I don't want to put, I want to put money down. No. Um, if there are enough cancellations or postponements or use whatever word you'd like to use here, not just from one conference, but across college football, it's totally reasonable that we push it back. Um, it's really easy for the Big Ten to reschedule something at Lucas Oil Stadium. That's that's not that big of a deal. Even if your, your ninth week, which is supposed to be your championship weekend, even if that, beca- you know, just the championship weekend. Because right now... Um, and I don't count, think I don't think we've mentioned this. Did we mention? Yeah, we talked about this on the on the last episode. That December nineteenth twentieth weekend is the championship weekend, but it's not just the championship weekend. They're doing a whole east versus west thing. One mm-hmm. will play one, two will play two, three will play three, so on and so forth, all the way down. And if you end up having to reschedule the Big Ten championship game, I don't know. You know, if it gets, especially if it gets pushed into January at some point, I, you know, there aren't enough domes in order to available domes. That is to just start playing nine, eight. Nope. One, (laughs) seven, the number is seven to play seven big 10 games on the same weekend at some random weekend in January, especially if you were scheduling it with the thought process in the back of your head that you might end up having to reschedule it again. Point is, is that this is all to be determined. Uh, This could turn into a complete shit show for all we know. And there is no national title this year. Uh, Not nothing. That we we've we took our last episode and did a victory lap because the Big Ten's playing. All right, mm-hmm. great. The Big Ten's playing. All we're really guaranteed at this point is the start of a season. And if the season doesn't finish, then let's hope it's based off of reasonable and transparent decision making. And let's hope that the conferences uh, I was going to say Power 5, but we really don't know what the Pac-12 is doing. But that the Power 4 conferences playing are communicating and working together and trying to get on the same page if we end up having to push stuff back once again. Mm-hmm. Or outright cancel, or whatever the situation might be. But all I really want is for the conferences to work together and for there to be some level of communication and transparency in that decision-making process. Cause like I said, we are only guaranteed the start of this season and not the end of it. And maybe not even the start too. I mean, well, I'm, I'm not trying away. to be that pessimistic. Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's look at the rest of the schedule here for the other teams. 
Sure. Looking at that here, who has the probably the toughest schedule? Uh, Before we get started on the toughest schedule thing, uh, want to say, uh, yes, Ohio State had an easy has a relatively easy schedule. I, I want to acknowledge that, but I'd also but. like to acknowledge that. <laughs> but but <laughs> I would also like to acknowledge that Ohio State is never going to have the toughest schedule in the Big Ten because Ohio State doesn't play Ohio State. Yep. They get to avoid playing Ohio State every single year. And if you want to decide who has the toughest schedules, well, then you have to look at Ohio State's schedule. Because if you're not playing Ohio State, count yourself lucky. It's just mm -hmm. that simple. Well, then look, let's look at here. Does who plays either? And if people are listening, you already know this answer. Who plays from the west side mm -hmm. the big northwest uh the who plays michigan ohio state or penn state two of the three there and if you're listening at home two of the three uh, michigan ohio state penn story penn state but there's if only they, two cross division games correct if they have two None of, of those any of those two of those any of they those have two, two of those three there and if you're listening earlier, you already know the answer to that, and that is Nebraska. Yeah. I don't think there's any other team from what I'm seeing here that does not play Michigan and Ohio State or Michigan Penn State or Ohio State Penn State other than Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, looking through it real quick, Illinois plays cross-divisionally. Illinois plays Ohio State and Rutgers. So they, they just got the bookends. <laughs> they did, yeah. <laughs> um, Iowa plays Michigan State, who's on the bottom half, and Penn State, who's probably number two. Uh, Minnesota plays Michigan, uh, but they also play Maryland. Uh, so that's medium good and medium bad. Uh, let's see. Nebraska, we already talked about. Northwestern plays Maryland and Michigan State. So that that's a good draw. That's a real good draw um, for Northwestern. Purdue plays Rutgers and Indiana, which is also a good draw. I don't know. Which, <laughs> what's, what's, well, before we do that, uh, then Wisconsin plays... Indiana and Michigan. So Northwestern Purdue, I think, are the two teams who you look at who avoided having to play wh who we will call like the big three of the East. Mm -hmm. uh, so who, who would you rather play? Maryland and Michigan State or Rutgers and Indiana? Rutgers in Indiana if it's just based on I disagree just playing them and winning yeah that's what else would we be talking about uh strength of schedule I have I, th I, I think this is all the same thing but <laughs> I'm very confused Kyle uh, I think that's all the same thing but um I think I'm, Michigan State is going to be very 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 bad this year um I would not be surprised to see them be as bad as Rutgers. Mm, I, I wouldn't go that far yet. Ah, man, Kyle, I don't know. Rutgers is bad. Like, just Michigan State's bad. They have a whole new coaching staff. They've not recruited well for several cycles in a row. You have an entirely new recruiting, or excuse me, uh, coaching staff during the pandemic. <laughs> and I get it, Rutgers has a brand new staff as well. Um, but Rutgers is Rutgers. Like, that that's a given. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. So, but Northwestern Purdue definitely have the easiest draw. Um, does that automatically make Northwestern and Purdue the favorites in the West because as, as far as the actual teams go, 
I prefer Minnesota, Wisconsin. I think those are better football teams. But if we're looking at the schedule pool, Northwestern and Purdue have a, a foot up. Probably. Probably. So kind of looking that a little bit further, Northwestern plays home to Wisconsin and Nebraska, but they play at Minnesota. Purdue at Minnesota, home, yeah, at Minnesota and Wisconsin, home to Nebraska. Now, it should maybe be no, no, maybe Northwestern, maybe yeah, Northwestern. We have to remember with Purdue, Rondell Moore has opted out, and yeah. I've not heard anything about him attempting to opt back in. Not yet. Well, the, you have to remember whether we're talking about Micah Parsons at Penn State or Rondell Moore at Purdue. They opted out a long time ago. It's one thing to be, by the way, if we mentioned, is, uh, we talked about Wyatt Davis on the last episode opting back in, and Sean Wade's also now opted back in. Um, yes. Yep. That was not official the last time we talked, but I'm sure everyone has heard it by now, and you don't need to hear it from us. Um, but also look at Minnesota's wide receiver, um, Richard, too. Yes. He's still kind of up in the air, too, last I heard. I thought I heard he was attempting to – I thought he's – Yeah, he's attempting to try to get back in, but – Yes. It's because more of... complicated for the guys who've been away for a long time. If you're mm -hmm. Wyatt Davis or if you're Sean Wade, it's a lot easier to – opt out be opted out for a week and then opt back in you really mm -hmm. don't have time to take benefits and make yourself ineligible yeah and but if you're micah parsons and you've been opted out for an entire month or more and now you know someone's like hey come do an autograph session and we'll pay you per autograph Mm -hmm. Be like, hell yeah, I'm going to go do that. Or something as simple as you sign with an agent and then the agent provides you benefits. That's not, not even necessarily hard cash, but like access to a training facility with trainers. And point is, is that they've had a lot more time to basically say, oh, there's not a season and start training and, you know, receiving free training and again, just committing what are now considered violations now that there's a season again and things that are violations if you're attempting to get back in. So it's very, mm -hmm. like I said, they're not necessarily not knowing what they have or haven't done. Their road to opt back in is not nearly as simple, excuse me, as Wade's or Wyatt's. Yeah, so we'll see here, but he is, he definitely wants to come back in. I've seen on here that he, he actually practiced on Friday with the team, okay. but still, and he's re re enrolled back into the school. So I don't know. Yeah. There's just a lot still up in the air about that and what money he has taken. And if there's, if he has NCAA will, will give, any kind of break because of everything going on too. I'm, yeah. We'll and I've seen that. Tom Mars, who is um, a, a man who was potentially about to sue the big 10, but didn't. Um, he is the guy who got Justin Fields immediately eligible to play for Ohio state. He's the same guy who got Tate Martell, who we may or may not talk about later, immediately eligible. He's a guy who knows his way around suing the NCAA or at least communicating and figuring. I've seen him tweeting about trying to get some of these players eligible again and how that, I, I don't know. Point is, is that we're all in like very uncharted territory right now. And as far as any of those players go, we'll see. That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. So who do you like in the West, Kyle, just to win it all, to, to meet Ohio State and Indianapolis? Uh, 
I, I think I'd still go with Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, Minnesota, I think, is interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm between Wisconsin and Minnesota right now. Um, I really like, I think Nebraska has taken some step forwards and I really like them. That schedule is just it's prohibitive. Just, yeah, they're cross schedules. I mean, three of their first four games, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Northwestern, then Penn State. That's all four of those games, Kyle, are nasty. Whew. I mean, Northwestern, maybe not as much as the others, but I think North, Northwestern has a real decent chance of making the championship game. And I say that probably more having to do with their schedule than their the teams themselves because as far as like actual talent level goes northwestern's probably my fourth favorite team in the big 10 west but the schedule just lined up so nice for them mm -hmm. all right kyle who do you like in the east <laughs> who do i like in the east well before i tell you in the east let me tell you about some seasonings that i like Okay, from fair the enough. Mac Canadian himself. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. You've been hearing us talk about him for almost a year now. We are almost a year with partnership with the Mad Canadian. Uh, it's I've I've had a number of his seasonings, and I, I tell you what, it's, it's a lot better than what you would find as your generic seasonings you would find at at Meyer at Target, wherever you do your grocery shopping at, though. Mad Canadian is the real deal here. Yeah, great no artificial seasonings. nonsense in these. Yeah, none. Uh, there's just great seasonings. Um, anything, anything that you want to cook, Mad Canadian's going to have it for you here. Uh, let me go under his pork selections here. I kind of like to go under. He, he, on his website, he has products for your chicken, your beef, your pork, ribs, vegetables, but. A lot of times you can kind of enter, you can go ahead and use one for another type. They're, oh, absolutely. A lot of them are reverse, are, yeah. You'll find so, a bunch of the spices under different sections because yes. they're right. versatile. The pork section, he has here the savory. Savory is a just a great salty savory mix. It's great on just a number of things. He has I, on here pulled pork. Yeah. What, what have you used it for, Jared? Uh, shredded chicken and shredded pork is what I've personally used it on. All right. Shredded and, and pulled meats. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the Brits blend. Uh, I think we've mentioned this a number of times. I think Jared mentioned it have, um, heavily last time. Uh, it's like a... It's heavily good for enough like that food. it has left my desk. Okay. It's made <laughs> it back. I'm probably been, using it. <laughs> it's, been, it's been moved back to the kitchen. All right. The coffee and cube. Jared's mentioned that one of his favorites it just has that little bit of caffeine in it. Uh, the Sonoran Heat, one of my all-time favorites too. It gives that little bit of extra kick in it too. Or the Two Border. Two Border, it's a has that maple sugar taste with a little bit of kick in it. it has some red pepper flakes in it. Great. He sells in the truck ribs by the bone. Mm -hmm. and it's slathered in the two border so if you want to give nice. that a try and you're anywhere near uh, Cary, ohio on friday there you go yes absolutely check out all of those seasonings and many more at the mad canadian bbq.com that is the mad canadian bbq.com sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10 percent off your entire order mad canadian barbecue company where he has your butt and pork and chicken and pork butt and pork butt <laughs> covered okay all right jared oh. who is the favorite in the east uh <laughs> let, me, let me think hard about that well let's look at the schedules Ooh. kyle i was kidding don't i'm not just 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 say it <laughs> pull the band-aid right here ohio yeah. state it is it is Ohio State favorable schedule. Uh, a lot of the teams that they play, it, um, I'm mainly looking at their cross divisional and their rival home games. Their only their only really tough game on the schedule here is Penn State. 
if they get through if they get through Penn State, they're two and O. There's a very good chance here that Ohio State will just sweep through this. And really they, they should. They really should with the with the team and talent that they have. I mean, with the caveat of Justin Fields. I really don't know what this team looks like without him, should something happen to him. And mm-hmm. let's face facts. If something should happen to him, a COVID test knocks you out for three weeks, essentially. Yeah. So I mean, it's it, it. you lose Justin Fields, especially if you lose Justin Fields for the first three games or the last two games. And when I say last two games, I'm not talking about Michigan State. I'm talking about the championship weekend. Who knows what happens? Um yeah. Ohio State is just not deep in right now talent at the quarterback position. They have a pair of incredibly talented freshmen who just haven't had the time yet. Beep, beep. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, They just haven't had the time yet. And so no offense to their futures, but their, their present is not great. Mm-hmm. Um. So there's always that, but if Ohio State stays relatively healthy, and that's tough to do because of COVID, because of no bye weeks, then yeah, they they should win the East. Mm-hmm. Penn State's a good team this year, but there's nothing about them that scares me anymore maybe even slightly less than past Penn State teams. But they're still a great team with great talent, and they'll still challenge Ohio State. It should not, it's not going to be a cakewalk. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really nice to be able to play Penn State at Penn State when no one's allowed in the stadium. So mm-hmm. that's a huge benefit. No one likes playing in the whiteout. What about, what about Ohio State's Week 8 opponent? Uh, yeah, th- that team up north, it is it is what it is. Um, they've had an exceptionally tough opt-out process. Uh, they've lost quarterbacks, multiple. They lost their best offensive linemen. Um, they've lost, a, I believe, a wide receiver, if memory serves. Um, and then the university as a whole is a mess. Uh, the faculty just vote I, I we were talking a bit about this on the last episode uh that no confidence vote went through against the president of the university which is the first time that has happened in the 100 plus year history of the un- university yeah um, well the good thing for for michigan though from what i saw here uh one of their best linemen uh is opting back in uh, Jalen Mayfield. Oh, okay. So that, that, that'll, that'll help them out, but it's still up is in the year. Op- is he, a, I, he's been out for a while. This says here that <clears throat> Jalen Mayfield to return to Michigan for the 2020 season. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I'm, it takes so, an but, incredible yeah, amount still, of discipline because he's much like the other players been opted out for a while. So hopefully he kept his uh, eligibility clean in a, Hey, just in case sort of way. Yeah. I think the biggest one is Nico Collins. Still yeah. nothing yet from him. Uh, Embry, Embry Thomas still not sure what's going on. If just going to um, stay out or whatever the case may be. But as of right now, the only one that has said that they're going to opt out this year to reverse that. Uh, is there is there lineman Jalen Mayfield? Okay, so that's good news for Michigan because uh, he's very talented. Mm-hmm. But but I did see like their quarterback though. He looked like uh, looked like at the time, and again we'll see we'll see how things go in the coming weeks ago. But it looked like he was trying to transfer out. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not opting back in. Yeah. Now, Amber Amber <laughs> Thomas is uh, their forget what year he might be a senior but he's like one of their main essentially Abra thomas is uh sean wade 
for yeah. Ohio State. So yeah, yeah. with Embry Thomas out, that's going to really hurt Michigan secondary too. And the last thing you want to do if you have any sort of hope for defeating uh, Ohio State this year is to have a depleted secondary. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 just – that's no, that's not going to happen for you. You can't hope to win against Ohio State with a depleted secondary. Yep. Ohio State's too deep at wide receiver and too talented at quarterback – Again, presuming health, which is just always a thing we presume, but have to maybe double presume it this year. Yeah. So who do you think might be a big surprise for this year, for the East, the big Northeast? I, I, know, think... I, know, I know you're not going to say uh, Michigan State no. or Rutgers. No. So do you think a surprise from Maryland, from Indiana, or that Michigan will actually be – a lot better than what we give, give credit to? No. This is not going to be a good year for Michigan. Um, I think it's interesting to watch, especially with Harbaugh um, in his con- in a contract year right now. Uh, Michigan's going to be very interesting to watch. Um, I, I just I don't like where they are right now as a university and the way the university is handling COVID. I don't like where the football team is at. Um, I don't like where their quarterbacks are at. I don't. I don't like anything about Michigan right now. It's yeah. I, don't, I just don't like anything about Michigan right now. Uh, I don't expect Michigan to take some sort of big step forward. Yep. Penn State. Um, they lost their best defender to an opt out in Micah Parsons, so that's tough. Um, yeah. Nothing about. Not even, not even a whisper. Not even anything about him returning. Uh, Franklin talked a bit about it on the Fox pregame show, uh, but really only said that quote, "There's been communication." That's it. Okay. Uh, if we're looking for someone to take a step forward in the East this year, I would just be interested to see what the happens terms. with Maryland at the quarterback position. Um, yeah. It's that's just I I hate to acknowledge it as a person who loves defense and who loves offensive line play, um, but the fact of the matter is, college football is so dependent upon how good your quarterback is. And if Maryland shows up better than expected behind the center this year, I think they could be pretty decent. I when I say pretty decent, I mean, you know challenge for third place in the big 10 east that's what i say when i say pretty decent i'm talking about michigan state is down period there, there's that's not they're they're a mess mm-hmm. so fourth place is open for the taking because indiana is just an ebb and flow sort of team sometimes they're good and sometimes they're not and i think they've been trend the further away they get from kevin wilson um and his tenure at Ohio, uh, now at Ohio State from Indiana, the less impressive Indiana looks. So I think Maryland can absolutely take over the fourth, st- fourth spot in the Big Ten East this year. And if Michigan is as big a dumpster fire as – if even if – they probably have to be a little bit more of a dumpster fire than I am even anticipate them being um, – it's it's not going to be it's not going to be great for for Michigan I think regardless but I think that opens a door potentially for Maryland if their quarterback play if say Tua ends up being really good and it, that's if he even wins the spot and mm-hmm. if maybe his presence there helps push the guy who does end up winning this it just it all depends upon the quarterback play. Um, which I think is another thing that makes Penn State a little bit intriguing right now. Mm-hmm. So what I hear, what I'm hearing from you, Jared, yeah, is that we're expecting nine in a row for Ohio State. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If Ohio State stays healthy, wait, right, right, do you mean nine in a row? You talking about the season, nine win season, or are you talking about the ninth? What do you What do you mean nine? Are you talking about yes? Okay, because that that applies twice. Uh, But yes to both of them. All right. 
All right, cool. Anything else about the the schedule here? Hopefully this schedule is set now. Uh, Michigan got a really tough draw if you look at the cross divisions. Uh, yeah, uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota. Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think they have the toughest from the big northeast. Yeah, they got the on the eastern side of the conference. They got the toughest draw. Yeah, Michigan's Michigan's got it tough this year. Uh, I mean, just look at the schedule real quick. I mean, obviously they're going to play Michigan State, Rutgers, and Maryland because they're in the East. But they have Wisconsin, Indiana, Wisconsin, or excuse me, Minnesota, Indiana, Wisconsin, Penn State, and Ohio State all on the schedule. Mm-hmm. And they, yeah, and they, they end it um, really strong. Like the opponents they play right at the end home to Penn State, home to Maryland, and then at Ohio State. All right, um, let's see. Let's let's get a couple Ask Sloopcast questions in, and then let's finish this the show. Sure. We have Duncan from the Discord. Duncan asks, now that football is back, any word on the running back room? Yeah. Um, I think it'll be really interesting to see what happens. It, it's, it, we haven't had, they have been practicing in pads. There's not been any media availability for say like Tony and Tom to go and watch the team practice. So we're not getting a ton of information out. And again, everyone's focus you know, the reporters and the school and the athletic department, everyone's focus has just been trying to get this new season going. So the coaches and the players have still been working, but the media and everyone hasn't necessarily been focusing on it. So it's really, we've not had a ton of information get out and I'm hearing good things about Trey Sermon. I'm still of the, I don't know. It'll be, I I think he'll either be one of the guys in the rotation and contribute in a good way, or he's going to be great. I think are the two separate things I'm hearing. I'm leaning more towards he'll be one of the guys in the rotation participating in a meaningful way rather than he's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I'm leaning right now. I could be wrong. Um, I'm still looking forward to see what like Teague can do and Crawley can do um I that's 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 where I'm at right now what Chambers can do um I the two things I'm hearing that are in conflict a lot is a how great the running backs are how mm-hmm. deep the running back room is how much they talked all last year about how much they really liked the young guys on the team um and we'll, but and then we'll they went how, and they got Sermon in the transfer portal. Yeah, and and I think which a lot those of those two too, things but, seem to be in contradiction. Yeah, and well, I think they they went out and got Trey because of the health with Master Teague. That's true. Uh, so I mean, Master Teague, from what we've been hearing, seems to be at near like ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, He's obviously, fine. obviously, we can't tell with about practices and all that, but on the Buckeye Scoop forum here, we've had at least uh, one person, one person from the Buckeye Scoop saying that they believe in their opinion that Trey is going to lead the teams in carries, rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. Yeah, um, there are, are a couple of our insiders over at the Scoop who are incredibly high on Sermon. Yeah. Um, I don't share that same level of confidence right now. Um, that, but that's just, that's just where I'm at right now. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of it too. I mean, look at what Master Teague did last year. Granted, some of it was in mop-up duty. Almost all was, of it was in mop-up. Here, here, And a lot of people really focused on the Clemson game when he just it didn't was, do anything, which is fair. Yeah. Fair to an extent. But we can, we saw, fair. but we saw what uh, Master Teague can do though. It was the first time Ohio State relied on Master Teague to create, 
to do something other than to kill the clock. It was the first time Ohio State turned to Master Teague and said, okay, we need you. And he didn't perform. Yep. Now, he that's against one of the best defenses in the country also. So it's both fair and not. Mm-hmm. Um, it was at a point where J.K. Dobbins with a sp- was a sprained ankle, wasn't it? Um, and who was at best eighty percent health, and I mm. think eighty yes. percent health it was is being generous. Very, very. That they had to put J.K. Dobbins back in because J.K. Dobbins at three quarter speed was better than Master Teague, which mm-hmm. is not what you want. Yep. Um, so we'll we'll see on Master Teague. We'll, we'll we just have to say we'll see. Mm-hmm. He's had an entire a- off season since then. Um, spent a lot yeah. of it hurt. Yeah, I, I think I think we'll get a good dose of both of them. I think so on. too. And yeah. and again, you still have Chambers and Crawley and other guys on the team. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Sun Card asks us in the Discord. Again, you can you can join us as um, you can join us in the Discord by being a fellow Patreon. A minimum, at least a minimum, three dollars a month gets you into the Discord get to get early access to our episodes and get to talk a lot of just chat with Jared and I and the rest of the fellow Patreons. Yep. Uh, Some card asks us, who is your prime candidate for a breakout year this year or this season? I think this is pick your young receiver on the offensive side. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and, and And I think that's, one of the young wide receivers I think are going to break through. Is it Ninjimba? I think that's where I'm leaning right now. Ninjimba? Um, is it Fleming? It could be Fleming. It could be Scott. It could be Scott. There's, could it be Stover? No. The tight ends are too deep right now. <laughs> He's like the fourth tight end on the depth chart. Now they move mm-hmm. Stover over to tight end because you have two seniors and a junior who could potentially leave if he has a really good season. That's why mm-hmm. you move Stover over to tight end. Yep. Cause Ohio state is incredibly deep at tight end this year, but could be decimated next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I'm having a hard time trying to find somebody outside of a wide receiver here. Scott Fleming and Jimba pick one of them. Pick one of those. Yeah, I, th- I think that's that's where you have to. Well, yeah. and the thing is, is that as good as we expect, like some of the younger guys along the offensive line, offensive line guys almost never like when you use the term breakout. <laughs> it's just I think, not I think, a term I think we use for the offensive uh, offensive line. I think that if it's going to be an offensive line, it's going to be one who would come in from an injury and they just kill it but well i think there are really good young offensive linemen coming into the lineup this year it's just yeah. not it's not how we talk about offensive linemen no. break out to me when we use the term breakout we're talking about a guy who the casuals don't know now who will know by the end of the season mm-hmm. yep or even I mean, we've seen a little bit of him last year. If you with someone that people may know, but will have a great year this year, maybe Harrison. Harrison on the defensive uh, end. See, I wasn't getting to the defensive end or the <laughs> defensive side yet, but yeah, Zach Harrison, I think, is the obvious name on the defensive side. Mm-hmm. Um, he's basically going to not by himself. He'll have Cooper, uh, among others, also in the rotation. But I think Harrison's the guy who they are. And, and good luck on this, mm-hmm. um, expecting to pick up the slack of losing Chase Young. Now, he's not going to do that. Not yeah. this year. Maybe we'll talk about next year. But, you know, Chase Young wasn't Chase Young his sophomore year. Chase Young needed to be a lesser version of himself as a sophomore to grow into what he became as a junior. And Zachary well, Harrison fair, gets that what, same, gets that same leeway. Well, to be fair too, um, Chase Young, his sophomore year, he was 
playing hurt as well. He was absolutely, but, but mm-hmm. and and I think I I think that even if Chase Young hadn't got hurt, he still wasn't a, as a sophomore what he was as a junior. Yeah, he was a even monster. if he yes, <laughs> he was practically but, unblockable last year. So when we're talking about Zachary Harrison, I think that it is fair to put him to where Chase Young was as a sophomore, but not to where Chase Young was last year as a junior as a point of comparison. Mm-hmm. All right. Last question from Stuart underscore E4 US vet. So maybe you should have some of our new buddies at Husker nation do some hashtag ask Sloopcast. This could make your footprint larger. Uh, well, we should definitely do that the week of the Ohio State uh, Husker game, yes. the Ohio State Nebraska game. But we don't, we don't, we don't want to let them in too far now, do we, Stuart? <laughs> uh, Kyle, I actually have one more for you. All right. Uh, this one actually also comes from Stuart underscore US Vet, uh, but via DM. Mm. So you didn't have access to this one. With Ohio State and Nebraska both sticking it to the Big Ten, would you consider them Eskimo brothers? Also, will there be a show, uh, he says, if solidarity, I think he means of solidarity between the two, or will Ohio State try to embarrass them since the eight to nine games have to be one-sided in the name of the eye test? Kyle, do you know what the term Eskimo brother means? No. Okay, do not, and this 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 goes for you and anyone listening, do not Google that. <laughs> that's that's just the do don't do it. As and I know the more I, I the more I say don't do it, the more tempted some of you will don't just don't do that. It's of course now I've made it sound worse than it actually you, but don't do it. Don't do it. It's fine. Uh <laughs> but don't okay. do it. Second 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 part of the question. Um, will, will Ohio State take it easy on Nebraska? Maybe pull the starters a bit sooner um, as, in a show of solidarity? Or are they going to get the same treatment as, as Rutgers? Not the same treatment. I've already kind of explained already earlier in this episode that Ohio State, just like everybody else, needs to show an eye test because of the unknown in future weeks. All right, but let, let me let me counterpoint that. I'm not saying you're wrong, but we're doing a we're doing a show here after all. So let me counterpoint that. What if I point out that Ohio State, along with the entire Big Ten, doesn't have any bye weeks? There's no bye weeks here. So you got I, I no see. bye weeks. You go into the December 20th weekend uh, having to play another game. And then when are are the playoff games this year? Are the playoff games going to be on January 1st? That's a big stretch with relatively no rest with. Okay. So let me, let me rephrase that. So will Ohio state. So to even maybe move past this uh, Stewart's question, will Ohio state, what's more important, getting your players some rest when there are no bye weeks and maybe pulling your players a little soon or keeping them in a little late in a blowout in order to really drive home the style points. No, I think, I think giving them the rest that they need is definitely important, but I think that the, that the coaching staff shouldn't go all trestle like once, once all the backup players come in then. So don't just go like, oh, we're going, we're going full on spread, four wide or three wide with a tight end. And, and then all of a sudden the, the uh, backups come in and all of a sudden we're doing two tight end sets then all of a sudden. Well, you also have to ask yourself how much – who, who do you have in a quarterback and how much do you trust them to actually run that offense? 
because you can erase a nice lead really quickly with a pick six or a couple turnovers. So you can't necessarily turn to your freshman quarterback or, you know, no offense to Gunnar Hoke, but to Gunnar Hoke and say, okay, go run Justin Fields offense when they aren't capable of it, either from an experience standpoint or from a physical standpoint. Well, and here's the question too. Does it have to be the offense Justin Fields runs too? Because I You're really not hope that have ho- time this year to install a second offense for Gunnar Hoke. I mean, that is, that is true, but the coaches have to be prepared for in case. Yeah. If Fields gets hurt, if he has to set out for three weeks, whatever the case may be, if, if the coaching three, staff needs to be prepared for that type of scenario. If it's a three week outage, it's not Gunnar Hoke. You need to pick yeah. one of your freshmen and go. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want to be mean to Gunnar Hoke, but he couldn't start at Kentucky. That, that That's the reality. Okay. I'm not trying. He's an Ohio kid. I like him. He at all. I can tell he's, he seems like a nice guy. Uh, nice kid, nice family. One of the best dudes I've ever been around. I go for urban Meyer on this, <laughs> but you didn't start at Kentucky. We all know you're, you're chug this year. We lost chug. We brought in a new chug. This chug's name is Gunnar Hoke. No offense, but I don't want him leading Ohio state for three weeks. You have to turn to one of your freshmen for a three week absence. Hoke comes in if you need a guy to hand the ball off for the fourth quarter. Hoke comes in if you lose, if if Justin Fields needed to come off, maybe get his ankle looked at real quick, and then decide if he has to go back in the game or not. That's when Gunnar Hoke comes in. If you're going to lose Justin Fields for three weeks, you need to pick one of the freshmen and go. understand it's so yeah it's a tough choice it is it, but it really in my is. opinion you have to err not towards style points i don't think style point if, if you if you're ohio state and you go nine and oh which i think you're fully capable of doing you go nine and oh even if it's eight no let's say rutgers or maryland ends up getting canceled for one reason or another and that game simply doesn't happen. Okay. So what? You're now 8 and 0 in the Big 10 champion. You're you're making the playoff. Mm-hmm. You're a team that everyone decided before the season even started was one of the two best teams in the country. Just don't lose. Just don't lose and you'll be you'll be in the playoff. I'm not worried about style points. Oh, Ohio State only won eight games this year. It only won nine games this year. I don't care. They do not care. Am I really supposed to care that much that they didn't have an opportunity to bash Bowling Green into the ground and score 70 to nothing and have the, the have the, the starters Citadel? out with 10 minutes left in the third quarter? Mm-hmm. Is, is, that, is that supposed to be the big deal breaker? So essentially this year, it's going to be kind of the opposite of the past few years. It's not so much, oh, who have you beaten? But this year, it's more of how many losses have you had? That's always been the case, Kyle. Who have you beaten is the is the philosophy you and I go by. Not losing is the philosophy that actually puts you in the playoff. Mm. Yeah. All right. I think that is all of the notes we have here for today. All right. Awesome. Um, want to encourage everyone, check out the master link. Um, you can, it's right there in the show notes. It's right there in the description of the YouTube thing, wherever you're looking or watching at this, watching at this. I said, watching at this. I'm, I'm so good at my job. <laughs> Uh, uh, in there, you can find our, our two separate merch stores over at uh, T Public. One of them is Sloopcast specific. The other one is not. It's just some cool, like, Ohio-based stuff. Um, I have a whole series. I'm going to lean up a little bit here. This is the Youngstown Mafia. I made up a bunch of fake pro sports franchises uh, for a bunch of the markets in Columbus. This is just one of them. This is the Youngstown Mafia. This is in our 7071 store. 
So you can go uh, into the master link, find that 7071 store, and you just find a bunch of Ohio-based apparel in there. None of it actually says Sloopcast or anything on it. But if you want stuff that says Sloopcast on it, you can check out the Sloopcast store. Isn't that great how that works? Uh, you can find the Mad Canadian link uh, inside that master link. Um, you can find our Patreon page in that master link where you can uh, sort of help keep this thing running. Uh, our lowest tier is $3 a month. Um, our highest tier is $15 a month. And I take that back. Our highest tier uh, is our partner tier, which is, is how you advertise with the Sloopcast. So if anyone's out there listening and you want to advertise with the Sloopcast, um, you can go to our Patreon page. Uh, or you can email us sloopcast at gmail.com uh, so we can have maybe a conversation first before you just sort of jump into advertising all of a sudden. Uh, and that's all the talking I feel like doing. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? The Columbus Crew. Yes. Columbus Crew keeps on winning. Crew on their first ever meetup with Nashville SC. We come out um, with a win in Columbus, uh, two to nothing. Uh, I did. I didn't catch the whole game from, but from the little bit I was able to see, though, Nashville really held on to the ball a lot, and a lot of passing going around really kept really limited Columbus from being able to do a lot with the ball. But from the limited opportunities that Columbus did, they made them count. Two nothing for the crew. I believe if I look at the standings, they are well ahead of the second place. Yep. So the crew, three, excuse me, eight wins, three draws, one loss. They have 27 points right now. And then second place, Orlando City and Toronto with 22. So have a comfortable, have a comfortable lead in their conference right now. Awesome. Anything else in Kyle's corner? It's okay to say no. Mm. Quit. no. You're, you're doing dead air. Quit doing... <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. You can't... I'm trying to edit these as little as possible, Kyle. You can't do the dead air. <laughs> as Kyle just stares into the camera. You bastard. Ha. <sighs> Uh, let's see. We're, we're doing sloop picks starting, uh, on Friday. So we're looking forward to doing that. Um, and, uh, just make sure to check out the Friday episode We're we're getting back into the swing of things and we're looking forward to it. Kyle, uh, should we do some, you maybe want to do like a, like an SEC preview, ACC preview, something along yeah, those lines. We'll do something. Something. We'll do something. We're going to do something. We're going to do something maybe a little bit more. We, we um, got a month to prepare we got a month until the Ohio State game, so yeah, we'll we'll try to do. Maybe we'll just we... do like one. Maybe we'll do more of a high level preview for the entire yep. non Big Ten world. Yep. We'll do something. We're gonna do something fun, and then we're gonna do our first round of slew picks. So that'll be Friday episode. Sounds so uh, ending today's episode will be the Ohio Weather Band. Uh, I'll play a song of theirs at the end of today's episode. Uh, you can check the sh- the song title. Uh, and find some links down in the doobly-doo. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again. This is the Ohio Weather Band. What's up, YouTube? I am muting myself because there is a... There's like an ice cream truck playing some weird song. Is it the one that goes do 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 do? No. It's almost like because that's like probably Caribbean. the one it's song. Caribbean. We... It's Caribbean. It's like Caribbean. That's the opposite thing I want an ice cream truck to do. <laughs> so if I look, no, stay away, because like the do do to do to do song yeah. is like the one song definitely, that doesn't get us a copyright a... <laughs> strike on YouTube. We're not. We're trying not to get a copyright strike. Definitely a ice cream truck. What's that? What'd you say? What's that? You said something. Something about the ice cream truck? I said it's definitely an ice cream truck. I know. I believe you. <laughs> I'm not questioning your ability to determine if it's an ice cream truck or not. I'm questioning the choice of the driver of the ice cream truck. Yeah. 
All right, let's let's rejoin our audio listeners. It, the, guys, if you watch on YouTube, you get these A plus conversations. <laughs> In which Kyle says he's going to mute and then doesn't because of rogue ice cream trucks. Weird. All right. Rejoining the podcast audience. W- would like to once again thank the Ohio Weather Band for ending today's episode and thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring today's episode. Let's take a look here. Uh, what do I got? What do I got? This is Norin Heat. This is one of the wonderful do it all spices brought to you by the Mad Canadian Focus Camera. There we go. Uh, the Sonoran Heat. Uh, this and the S and P Bud. If you're if if you're looking to uh, sort of maybe finally because you've heard us talk about it for a year and maybe finally jump in buy some Mad Canadian spices. Uh, they, he has some really good stuff that is like signature like that you maybe can't get anywhere else or, or maybe there may be a little bit more like specific, um, like the coffee and Q, uh, which is, uh, chili maple paprika, but then has the coffee in it. You can't find stuff like this anywhere else or the, uh, the old fashioned, which is a bourbon cherry mix. You can't just find that anywhere else. So you go there and you get some of the maybe quote unquote weird stuff or unique stuff. Unique's a better word. Uh, but while you're there, you're also going to want to pick up some really nice do it all spices because, you know, the coffee and Q is really good for certain situations. Uh, but then you also just need stuff that becomes like a staple of your, of your kitchen. And the two that I really want to recommend that become absolute kitchen staples are the Sonoran heat, which I think I already did this with the Sonoran heat. Uh, and then the S and P bud. Uh, the S and P bud is salt. It's pepper. It's more than that. It's not just salt and pepper. It's a lot more than that. And it's a great do it all. Uh, like, I don't, I just want to throw something in these mashed potatoes real quick to make them not boring. Throw some S and P bud in there. Maybe you're making some hash browns. Boom. S and P bud on those hash browns. You can really do anything you want with that or the Sonoran heat. Uh, the Sonoran heat, don't let the name fool you. It's not that hot. It's a little bit hot. Uh, there's, I believe maybe some, um, let's see, there's some black pepper, there's paprika. It's, it's a little bit spicy. Uh, now, but if you're looking for something real spicy, then you're going to want to, and again, maybe we're moving away from like your do it all spices into something a little bit more specialty. Uh, so we're trying to get like something that's great for hot wings or whatever you're trying to make. That's going to, you know, give you a really nice kick. Now we're talking about moving into either the four horsemen or the discord. Um, which are both four pepper blends. Uh, The Discord has a little bit of a sweeter base, while the Four Horsemen has a saltier base, but they're both really spicy four pepper blends, uh, and those two are two of my absolute favorites. Uh, He also has the Ope, which is a smoked ranch, which isn't one I talk about a lot because it has a little too much dill in it for me. So it's not one that I personally like, but that's only because I have a dill aversion and that has nothing to do with anyone else. That's just, that's just me. But maybe you love dill, in which case check out the smoked ranch. Uh, you can find that spices and all of these other spices that have scattered across my desk um, over at the madcanadianbbq.com. You can use promo code SLOOPCAST10. That's SLOOPCAST10 at checkout. Uh, once again, madcanadianbbq.com, promo code SLOOPCAST10, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, he's got your butt covered. 